so we have learned about paramagnetism and diamagnetism okay and we have seen why they happen what is the reason behind paramagnetism and diamagnetism now we are going to look at another form of magnetism which is known as ferromagnetism okay you can think of it as your extreme form of your paramagnetism okay so magnetism i'm making a spelling mistake over here okay here we are so this is as i said an extreme form of paramagnetism your ferromagnetic materials tend to get magnetized very strongly okay your magnetization in a paramagnetic material is very feeble okay your magnetization in a ferromagnetic material is very strong okay so the reason for this is your ferromagnetic materials they have spontaneous magnetization okay just like what we have learned in our ferroelectric materials the same concept is what's present in your ferromagnetic materials the only change is instead of electric field you have your magnetic field instead of polarization you have your magnetization okay so your ferromagnetic material also undergo what's known as hysteresis okay so if you're going to draw a curve between your h which is your magnetic field and m which is your magnetization it's going to be something like a hysteresis loop okay so initially when you're going to start your magnetization is going to increase like this first it increases very fast then it increases relatively slower and it attains a saturation value okay now if you are going to increase your magnetic field there is not going to be any increase in your magnetization okay and now if you are going to start decreasing your magnetic field it is not going to take this path again rather it's going to become something like this okay and when you reach to a certain negative magnetic field you are going to have a zero magnetization this negative magnetic field again is called your coercive magnetic field okay similar to this concept of a coercive magnetic field we define a term known as coercivity okay so your coercivity determines the amount of magnetic field that needs to be applied for your magnetism to become zero okay just realize even at zero magnetic field i do have a remnant magnetization okay this is known as your remnant magnetization or residual magnetization or retentive magnetization okay so corresponding to this term we have what is known as retentivity okay so it is the amount of magnetization retained or present when there is no magnetic field okay so this was your hysteresis loop as you would in decrease your magnetic field now if you are going to again increase the magnetic field you are going to trace out a new path which is going to be something like this okay so this is your hysteresis curve similar to what we have already seen in dielectrics or ferroelectrics okay just realize we had earlier seen that my magnetic flux density is equal to mu0 h plus m okay in a ferromagnet this factor magnetization is more pronounced okay this factor basically determines your magnetic flux density okay so you can pretty well say that your b is almost equal to mu0 into m okay so if you are going to trace a graph between your flux density and your magnetic field then also you are going to get a same hysteresis loop okay also as it is visible from this graph there is a complex relationship between your m and h okay so for a ferromagnetic material your sus 